And so they gave me a brand new antibody, which had just come up on the market. I took it and it helped a little. It took me all summer to become functional. Functional, but I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't eat anything. I, I lost 30 pounds in 28 days at one point. Now, some of you who are astute know what went on here. Why did I have the brain fog in the first place? What happened that I had terrible pain and I couldn't eat? Because these are things that are happening to people every day, and the doctors still to this day, don't, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not down on doctors or the medical system, but they have big holes in their thinking. You know, we need them when we need them, and we, we have to know when we and get help elsewhere. Anyway, so meanwhile I was teaching school and I was missing a lot of work and I wasn't really getting any better. I lost a total of 55 pounds in six months and uh, somebody said I should go to an herbalist and I just was going, oh you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> what? Well, what did I have to lose? I was dying. So I went. And I went to Tom Tracy in Big Fork. Turned my life around. Turned my life around. Because he found I was toxic. I was terribly toxic. He started doing herbal cleansing. And in three weeks it was amazing. I was back to work all the time. It was amazing. And I said, what's going on here? These are dumb little balls of something, you know? But it really made an impression on me. So I went, got a whole nother box full of little bottles, and I was back full time at work within probably five weeks, six weeks. And this made the biggest impression on me, you can't imagine. Because I, you know, I put sage in my stuffing and thyme on my chicken, but that's about all I knew about herbs. And from then I said, I have to learn. And so I said to Tom, I said, how do I learn this? He said, one herb at a time. I never will forget that. Okay, so that's the beginning of how I got into herbs. I had, been, I had gotten into nutrition earlier because I was diagnosed a diabetic when I was in my mid-30s. And I was determined not to go on insulin. Did somebody come in and didn't get sheep? Anybody else who didn't get sheets? And so I had already done a lot of studying about nutrition. And so all of a sudden, now I'm thinking, okay, how do these go together? What, what's really important? What, is, what do I need to do? And as I studied herbs, and I began to say, seriously, 2001, I retired from teaching and decided to study I studied homeopathy with the British Institute. <clears throat> studied herbs with Dominion Herb College in Canada. Studied nutrition with various people and finally got certified. So I am not a medical person. I do not have medical credentials. But I have a lot of credentials. I have a lot of education. And the reason I say that is because I have a hard time with people who are credentialed, they're saying, well, you really aren't qualified. And so I looked it up and I have more education than a naturopath that goes to, to best year because I've taken five years with the British Institute of Homeopathy, three years with Dominion Herbal School. So what I'm reason I'm saying that is not to glorify myself. But to help you respect people who have, who work as an herbalist, who work as a homeopath, or, um, it's not so much the degree you have, but it's what kind of effort and interest you put in what you're doing. Okay, I, uh, how many of you use herbs other than for culinary purposes? How many of you use them for health? Okay, most of you do. Most of you do. So, okay, I'm just quickly. I, I know you can read, and I'm not going to insult your 
So if you just look at the page, it says the many faces of the rose. When you get home tonight, I want you to really look at why do we need yours. There are lots of reasons. They provide nutrients. They, they help us prevent and deal with infectious disease, which is probably the biggest problem we have coming in the future, is infectious disease. Mutating microbes want to survive, and I think they're smarter than we are. The drug industry has already said, we can't keep up. They're not even trying to make new drugs. So I'm asked the question, because I'm very much a follower of this man. I've, I've studied everybody. I have over 450 books in my health library. I started out with Louise Tenney, the easiest and most comprehensive for a beginner. I recommend if you're starting out. And uh, if you don't get everything today where my website is up, which I hope is so we're having problems, I will have a list of my favorite her books. But she's the easiest to use and understand. And I still go to it after all these years. I've been using her book for 20 years. Louise Tenney. Okay. And there are a lot of other books. Yes. How do you spell Tenney? T-E-N-N-E-Y. But in the last few years, when we talk about, about three years ago, I did my first class on the world without antibiotics. And it's serious, you guys. We have no idea, unless you're a statistic follower, how many people are dying from infectious disease for which they have no drugs. Now this man, seven haired beginner, and I'm sorry I don't have a card when I didn't have time, I've been in Seattle. Uh, helping my son, who the doctors have messed up so badly that I'm not sure we're going to say how bad it is. Anyway, Stephen Herbuter has about 10 books, and I've seen them on many of the different displays. He's very much, but he has studied in depth and has scientific um, background studies on how this is just one book. He has a book on antibiotics, he has a book on. Lyme, several books on Lyme, he has a book on antivirals. I just brought this one because it's a general. If you're only going to buy one, get this one until you can afford more. And like I said, if you want to follow me on my website after it gets up in the next couple weeks, I will have a list of books that I use the most <coughs> to recommend. There are tons of good books out there. But he deals with herbs from China, along with Western herbs that are much more effective, especially in combination, than some of the other herbs we've been using. Um, we have to realize that we have to step out of our comfort zone. The first chapter in my book is Thinking Out of the Box. <coughs> my, my book is available on Amazon. I just published it. Um, and I will be at Whitney's next Saturday afternoon doing the book signing. Yes. Can I turn the lights off? That's sure. Perfect. So, yes. Can you tell me who the author of that second book is you cited? Uh, Stephen, S T E P H E N, Herod, A K R R O D, Buhner, B U H N E R. Thank you. And I apologize, like I said, that I don't have a, I always have a PowerPoint, but just didn't have time. So, I'm asked all the time, how come herbs are going to work when the drugs aren't working for these, anti these resistant microbes? We have to understand that a drug is created for a specific purpose. An herb has many different constituents, and those constituents work, or properties, you can, whatever you want to say, and they work in synergy in a way that man will never create anything. And that's why herbs are so very powerful and so important in our lives. <clears throat> I started an herb group back in, in Folsom back in 2011. <clears throat> Excuse me, we've been meeting, well, for a lot of years we've met every month, but this, this year I've been going in other directions. And we have, <clears throat> I'd say, a couple dozen people who have major herb gardens, medicinal herb gardens. Almost everybody grows some herbs. If you have fresh herbs, and you don't need to have a whole lot, 
on my website, I, like I said, I'm starting to work on material for my website now. The book is done. I'm going to have weekly blogs with um, things that I didn't get to put in the book <laughs> because I finally somebody said just publish it, Linda, because I kept saying I got more to say. I got more to say. They said put it on a website, so I will. But I have seen a whole group of people. We have over 100 people that have been in and out of our herb group in Polson, little Polson, population 5,000. But many of them do come from outlying areas. But I have seen them turn their lives around, and their medicine cabinet now is full of herbs and homeopathic remedies and some essential oils. Now, some people are big into essential oils, and they have their place. But <clears throat> I'm concerned that many people use them incorrectly and use, use too many internally and it can be damaging over a long period of time. Herbs are much safer, although there are precautions, which you will find in my book and it will be on my website. But herbs are part of our food chain. And they were used, they are very nutritious. Um, Oregano, for instance, is a tremendous antioxidant. Cilantro is a tremendous chelator to chelate uh, heavy metals. I'm just giving you just a smattering. Uh, <clears throat> I myself, because I have a history in my family of cardio problems, so I take a cardio tonic, which I've created, and it's in the book. It's a bunch of herbs <clears throat> in powder form. You can do it in tincture form. But I do a lot of tinctures, so I don't always want to do tinctures. So you can use herbs fresh, of course. Uh, I put them in, in the summertime because I have a whole yard full of herbs. I probably have 60 different herbs in my yard. I've never counted them. <laughs> um, I just go pick them from my salad. They're very full of nutrients. <clears throat> They're tremendous in helping you prevent disease. And then you can dry them and you can use them for teas or whatever. You can powder them to make tonics or put in smoothies. And then there's always the tincture, which you can make with alcohol or glycerin or, or apple cider vinegar. Um, ones that are made with alcohol have a much longer shelf life. Uh, but those people who are, I had someone just yesterday visit with me, and she and her husband are both recovering alcoholics. And, uh, she came to my teacher class, and she said, I just don't think I should have that much alcohol around. And I said, I agree. So I put her in, in touch with somebody. She said, I can take a little teacher, it doesn't bother me. But having those big bottles of alcohol in the house are not a good idea. So I said, you know, I'll just put you in, in contact with somebody who makes tinctures, and you can get them if you can't get them in the store. Um, and you know, there, there are ways to work this out. Glycerin are great for children, but again, they don't have the shelf life. Okay, so if you have children, and, it, and I want to point out two books. Uh, this one is by Kathy Garber, a local Kalispell gal who started Mountain Meadow Herbs. And this is at, was free for a while she, on her website, Garber, G-A-R-B-E-R. -E and it's how she saved her son's life with herbs. He wasn't expected to live. When he was from a baby on, he's now 20, I don't know what, 20 something. What's the title? The title is uh, A Mother's Guide to Herbal Extracts. Or you can just say another thing, just do Kathy Garber if you're looking it up. This one is another one, Herbal Healing by Demetria Clark. And it, it's not only for children, but it has things that are the potencies that can be used for children. But it has a lot of uh, wonderful uh, recipes, like making calendula salve, uh, sinus headache bath salts, sinus mustard, um, eczema tea, wild cherry cough syrup. Um, and, and it is a really good one for recipes. And again, this will all be on my website. Just keep my website handy and, and, and we'll catch up. OK. So herbs. <coughs> can become your everyday friend, and they should be. Mine live, I have powdered herbs in my cupboard. I just grabbed this, it doesn't look very fancy, but this is who I am. This is dandelion leaf. 
which is powdered to be put in soups. Not powdered, but ground. And do you know that dandelion is one of the most powerful greens on the planet? I think it's the third most. I'm not sure who's first or second. And it's free. <laughs> now, the big thing is, if you're using sprays, then nothing in your yard is edible. And this is one of the things, the biggest things I have trouble getting people to understand. I became an organic gardener in the 70s, right after I was diagnosed with diabetic. Organic Gardening Magazine at that time was a wonderful guide. It was my Bible. I didn't know anything. It has become a yuppie magazine now called Organic Life. And I just canceled my subscription. But chemicals are killing us. And they're, they will kill your children and your grandchildren. It's just that simple. I heard a statistic on national news night before last. Millennials who I believe are people would be in their 20s, am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, are starting to have a very, very high rate of colon cancer. Yeah. And they didn't even, up until now, they didn't even test, it, test for colon cancer until you were over 50. Mm -hmm. So people are saying, why? You probably know. Number one, the, the food that most children have eaten has been lacking so many nutrients in my book, I quote a study in which they found that in newborn babies across the country, not just in an isolated geographic situation, there were over 240 chemicals in the umbilical cord of a baby. How much chance does that child have to be strong and healthy? So one of my goals, should I live long enough and God be gracious enough to keep me strong and healthy, is to teach and work with young women how important it is for them to detoxify their bodies before they have children. Now, how many of you know what a miasm is? I'm kind of all over the, the place here. I'm just trying to give you a smattering of terminology, a smattering of things, so that you'll want to know more. Um, there are a lot of people teaching classes. I will be teaching classes as soon as I get caught up. Right now I have a list about that long of things I have to catch up on that I promised to do last year. Um, and you will gradually, as you take classes and you read books and you start to, if you buy my book, there are lots of websites in the back that you can use to reference more information. My book is written to help everybody start to find a healthier path to live. It's worked for me. I was supposed to die at 50. I was supposed to die at, actually at five, when I was five when I had Bright's disease. I, I, they had just discovered penicillin and it had never been used yet in um, the civilian world. It had only been used in the service and luckily in overseas in the war. And luckily I had a doctor who was smart and astute and he said, we have nothing for it, but we're going to try this, and it worked. I mean, I had way too much, I was a major candida, etc., etc., but I'm alive. Okay, so my book is called Nutrify and Detoxify, Manage Today's Health Challenges. If anybody says they can cure something, yeah, maybe. The big thing we need to do is manage things. And some people say, well, I'm predestined. My dad had cancer. I'm going to die of cancer. Not, maybe, maybe not. What will be the criteria that makes the difference? The choices that you make in your life. How you eat, how you live. It, it's a whole lot of things. You may have a, a hereditary disposition. And in homeopathy, we go way back in history. We call them miasms. And that is a stain on your DNA, which may go back generations, go back to syphilis, or go back to gonorrhea, or go back to tuberculosis. Now, every generation is creating new miasms. We now have cancer miasm, petrochemical miasm. We have all kinds of new miasms because we are passing them on to our children, children to grandchildren. And so that is a concern. 
But neutrifying your body, and I'm talking about, I may be a fanatic, I don't care. But I don't eat anything without thinking about what it's going to do to my body or for my body. And somebody said, if I had to live like you, I remember a woman saying that once when I was teaching in the group. I was starting into the health thing. She said, if I'd eat like you, I'd, I'd rather die. <laughs> About a year later, she comes in with this green drink. <laughs> I'm going, so what's in that drink? Well, I probably need some more nutrient, all the excuses. And okay, she didn't really want to die. She was willing to make the change. I don't eat that badly. In fact, I'm going to write a, a cookbook on things that we people can eat who can't eat a lot of other things. I don't eat sugar. I don't eat gluten. I don't eat anything processed that has MSG or aspartame. They're, they're poison, especially MSG. And so that's another one of my projects. And my family and my friends keep me motivated. Linda, what do I do? How do I fix this? The doctor isn't helping me. I'm sicker because of, from the drugs. That keeps motivating me. I study. I start in the morning at 6 o'clock with my, my cardio tonic and the computer. If anything, I'm going to die of radiation. But I sit in a magnetic chair. I have a salt lamp. I have plants all around me. <laughs> I do everything I can to try to, you know, detox. But, but you know, I have tons of books and I use them. But let's face it, if I want something fast, I, I start, you know, looking on the internet. Okay, so you need herbs to feed your body nutrients, to prevent infectious disease, to help build your immune system. Your immune system is the bottom of everything. Not just infectious disease, but it's cardio, cancer, autoimmune. Autoimmune is the most difficult thing we're facing outside of infections because autoimmune is totally individualistic. And I have, you know, I have books on ones on lupus and ones on fibromyalgia and ones on I spent all this money on all these books and I'm going, really now? <laughs> it's only the reason people have autoimmune is because the immune system is broken. It's broken because it didn't have the nutrients to have healthy cells. It's broken because it's full of toxins. Everything, and I push this, somebody said, do you think you said that often enough in your book? That nothing should go in our bodies, this is the book I wrote, and nothing should go in your bodies that doesn't come from nature. And that doesn't mean by way of some processing plant. That means, you know, so I'm big on organic gardening, growing your own herbs. Uh, and, and if you can't, working with buddies, people who can, help each other. Uh, you know, when I talk to people in the city, it's like, I can't do that. Okay, so how can you solve this problem? You can find organic growers. You can buy regularly from them. You can. You have a balcony. Could you put some planters out there? You'd be surprised what you can grow in a, in a tub of soil. You know, so, okay. Help specific organs. How many of you know about milk thistle? I you notice that some of these, I just had a handwritten label. These are what is it again? Milk thistle. What's it for? Liver. 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 For liver. Okay. It is very specific for helping your liver deal with all the toxins, physical and emotional, that are in our world. And I mix it with other things like barberry or shizandra or, you know, there are other dandelion root. Dandelion root's another. That dandelion in your yard is worth its weight in gold. The leaves are full of nutrients, and, and it's also a good diuretic. Uh, and the root is used for all kinds of things. And they're coming up with more research all the time. I can't even keep up with it. It's free for the asking, as long as you didn't spray it. Mm -hmm. You know, I have trouble. I have people come and help me because I've gotten old and people, and I can't do all my yard work. I've, I've had re art replaced. I have to have another a shoulder replacement. And you're going to say, why? I've asked that. You want to know why? <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Because people ask me all the time. 
if you're so such a hot shot and you're so good at this and you write books and you give classes, how come you have an artificial hip, a knee, a shoulder, and you're going to have another one? So I sat down with the surgeon and I said, okay, why? And I, I thought I knew. Do you mind if I do? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, and, and he said exactly what I thought he was going to say. I had had strep when I was a child after I had scarletina, a scarlet fever. I had quarantine scarlet fever, which after which I was never the same. And that was after I had Bright's disease, so my immune system was already wrecked. And the reason I tell you these things is because I want you to go back in your own health history. And I even, when I'm doing major classes, I have people, I have forums where people write these things down and look at why you are the way you are today. What caused it? What happened? And I, that strep settled in, he said, the strep settled in your joints. And it's amazing that I, I got to be this old because I had my first, first replacement in 2011. And the other thing he said that can cause it is autoimmune. Well, I have autoimmune, all kinds of stuff. They diagnose sarcoidosis, but it doesn't, the only reason doctors diagnose it is because they have to put a number on the code so that the insurance company is happy with them. Right. And they can choose the doctor or the drug that the AMA says they're supposed to use. Autoimmune is really all the same thing. Your immune system is damaged. It can be damaged from toxins in your body. It can be damaged from underlying infections. I started having, um, this is kind of a way out thing, and some of you are going to go, really? I go to a naturopath in Missoula, uh, who I love dearly, Christine White, and she started me on hydrogen peroxide intravenous therapy. How many of you have heard of it? Okay, and it's pretty extreme. My, my one son said, it's going to kill you, Mom. I said, well, I did, I did the research. It's not going to kill me because your body makes hydrogen peroxide as part of its process for dealing with microbes. And I've had, I don't know how many I've had now, over a period. I had like 12 the first year after they diagnosed the sarcoidosis. <laughs> I was a real mess. And then I go in and have three or four, like before I'm having surgery to make sure my body's clean. Because it kills virus parasites, fungus, bacteria. It's expensive, $135 a whack for, for a hydrogen peroxide intravenous therapy. Oh, you can't just buy the uh, uh, no, 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 no. Um, uh, there are some practitioners that do the oral, but it has to be, uh, it has to be a certain grade, and it has to be done very, very carefully. And even I, won't do it because it's too dangerous. Okay? And some people have and are just fine. I'm not saying you can, but if you do, make sure you get in information on it. it. Has to be food grade 35%. It has to be, you know, you, you it's not anything to fool with, but I have the hydrogen peroxide. I figure there's nothing more important in my life than my my kids will make money. Um, I don't have a husband or anything like that. So what's more important in my life? Nothing than my health. It's your greatest asset. Without it, you don't have anything else. You have nothing else. When I was sick, nothing else mattered. You know, you have to decide what your priorities are. And I hear people all the time say, I can't do that because it costs too much. Money. Okay, what can you give up that's not as important as your health? You know, you, we make pro, we make changes, and 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 I talk a lot about that in the book. Foods need to be from nature. That doesn't mean you have to go out in a pasture and pick all your greens. It means organically garden and eat herbs as part of your foods. And I list the herbs. The basic herbs for food are parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme, oregano, uh, dill, savory. They are all very nutritious. They're not the only ones, but they're the ones that are really high in nutrients. And the most famous and important of all, if I had to leave, run away to the woods, and could put something in my pocket, what would I put? Turmeric. That'd be second. <laughs> garlic. Garlic. Oh, garlic. Yes. garlic. Oh, yeah. Because garlic has so many properties. 
And uh, also, you wouldn't have to worry about the bugs or the bears or maybe even people. 